Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to Steel Monotype Run of Eevee Emerald. Last time, we kicked Team Magma out of their hideout. Also, off camera, I attempted to shiny hunt a Magnemite or Magneton in New Mauville. Gained quite a few levels in the process. Of course, I didn't find one. But, the way I see it, this is going to save me a bit of time on doing level grinding before the Elite Four later in the game anyway, so... Eh. Oh yeah, and I taught Metagross Meteor Mash. It's a little less accurate than Metal Claw. It's still more accurate than Iron Tail. And it has the same effect. Also, there's a crowd over here. You get used to it. Who could have seen this one coming? Yeah, you think, old man? We'll see about that, Johnny Depp. Also, um, you may have noticed earlier when I showed you my team that I had leveled up my Linoon via the uh, daycare. So now it has it gets a slightly different set of items. Okay, so let's see. Where do you show up this time? Ah! You're in the other flower pot. Oh, right, it's this one. <clears throat> Which one doesn't use Leech Life? Well, the answer is Dustox. Ogiana! All right. The first two are usually pretty easy, the third one requires you to, uh... I'm pretty sure the burn heal costs more. Now this is where it starts to get to be bullshits, because... Now it's a memory test. You know what? Fuck this shit. This one's a trick question. If you were playing Ruby and Sapphire, the answer would be Puchiana, but in this game, it's Zigzagoon. And the answer is one. Yeah, the problem with the last two is that's basically memory tests that rely on you remembering things that you probably never paid attention to. The most egregious one is up here. So, uh, yeah. I am not going to have any shame in, in safes coming for this one. But that's more like it. Yeah, I technically did cheat because I was safe scumming there, but you know what? Ain't nobody got time for, for fucking pop quizzes. I'm not a kid anymore, I don't have time for that shit. Anyways, moving on. Now, for those of you who thought we were going right to the Team Aqua hideout, you were wrong. Yeah, this is broken too, but this time, it works out in my favor. Anyways, let's go on through. We're not here to catch anything, we're just here to get items. Now, because this guy's in the way, bear in mind, this does mean that, uh... Well, you'll get softlocked if you don't either have a Pokemon with Fly, or deliberately get yourself knocked out. The reason I'm here is we are looking to get certain items. Also, over here is the section where you can go post-game. Get a bunch of the Pokemon that would have been in Altering Cave, 
back in the day. If the e-reader was ever properly released, but it wasn't, at least not in North America. So yeah, there's segments that you need each bike to get to. There's another segment where you need the mock bike. We'll go back and get to, to that later. I could have sworn there was a hidden item up here somewhere. Evidently not! My statement from several episodes ago stands. The Acrobike is objectively worse than the mock Bike at getting you access to various hidden shit. So let's remedy that problem real quick. Fuck off! I'm recording here! Okay, once more with feeling. This time we want to go left. Because I guess that's where all the hidden items are going to be. Go away. So now we go back across. Did I pick up anything? No. Okay. So, over here is the mudslide. Now we move up here. I think there's at least one item around. Actually, I know for a fact there's one, and it's one that I might... I don't know if I'll use it right away, but if I get to my sub-goal and I have to do the contests, then I definitely will be using it. And you could probably guess what that is if you played this game before. It's Solar Beam. Okay, now let's go to the Team Aqua Hideout. So now we just go to the Team Aqua Hideout, which is just north of here. <clears throat> now, no wonder why didn't I go here first? I'll answer as soon as I make this guy fuck off. Like I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, if I were to go here first, well, you'd have a couple of grunts blocking this, and basically the game railroads you into going to Slateport City, whether you like it or not. <clears throat> Each generation of Pokémon successfully got worse and worse when it came to the railroading. I mean, I get why, kind of, because they, well, players didn't like being gated by HMs, but... Also, well, it tends to make level curves a bit difficult to balance if you don't, but still, I prefer the more freeform exploration of the earlier generations. And we wonder what about Gen 9? That did it as a, uh, that's an open world. Did you like that? Well, not really, and I'll explain why. Because although it's an open world, in theory, in practice, it's very obvious that they had an intended order for you to go in. And to add insult to injury, the order is utterly nonsensical, requiring you to cr crisscross the map multiple times to get to wherever you need to go. At least based on the logic of following the level curves. But when I played through, through Scarlet, for example, I actually battled the gym leader you're supposed to face second to last for my third gym. My hint should have been that you can't climb that mountain. But of course, me being as stubborn as I am, I said, fuck you, I'm climbing that mountain anyway. 
So I did. And then I needed a power grind in order to get my third gym badge. But I got it. Actually, I think my team was still underleveled when I actually beat it. The fact that I picked it that I picked uh Boy Coco, so I had the fire and ghost type starter at its perks. Pretty sure we didn't need that, but we'll take those. Down you go. Hate to tell you that guy, but I already knew. Okay, now this segment is a bit of a puzzle, so, uh... Yeah, we are gonna save Scum a bit for this, because I don't want to waste too much time. Okay, so it's this one. And then this one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's gonna be this one. And now we're here in Archie's office. These two in the front are Electrode. And you get the Master Ball. You know what? We're gonna fight them anyway. Why not? Might as well. Oh, what'd you get? Escape rope. Useless. I'm actually going to try and catch him, just because I can. Yeah, don't want to use the, don't use the Ultra Ball on you. Or Master Ball, rather. Nope. Okay, you know what? If you're just gonna waste my time, I'm gonna use the speed up. Well, never mind. Alright. Moving on. Let's try you. Alright. Let's try this again. Nope! Not this time. Now we're back here. Let's continue on our way. Hate to tell you this, but that's basically what your job is, to hurry up and wait. We get over here, and we get a nest ball. It catches Pokemon that are lower level, well it has a higher catch rate if your, po your Pokemon is higher than the Pokemon you're throwing it at. Generally speaking, 
Unless you have a huge level advantage, you're usually better off just using Ultra Balls. <laughs> well, unless this was Generation 1. Generation 1 has some very, um... Let's say it has some very interesting capture mechanics. <clears throat> In fact, there's this... I can't remember his channel, but there's this guy that breaks down the exact formula, and it shows you just how broken they are. Gen 2 is actually even funnier in some ways. Because, basically... All, I think it's only like one of the apricot or apricorn balls, rather, actually works as intended. One of them actually does the exact opposite of what it says it does the love ball. It's supposed to have an increased catch rate on Pokemon of the opposite sex from what you're using. Instead, it boosts the catch rate for Pokemon of the same sex. There's something you'd like to tell us, Game Freak. I mean, I won't judge, but you do you. Actually, I take it back. The moon ball is even funnier. So the moon ball in the beta actually worked properly. The problem is they changed the item indexes. So, instead of checking for a Pokémon that evolves by the Moonstone, it checks to see if a Pokémon evolves using a Burn Heal! Frankly, I think that needs to be an Easter egg in a future Pokémon game. Just have a Pokémon that evolves by using a Burn Heal as a tongue-in-cheek joke. And make it a Pokémon that normally evolves by a Moonstone. Just make it an alternate evolutionary form. Also, here's Matt. So yeah. In the same way that Tabitha used to be skinny, Tabitha used to be kind of a chonker. And lighter skin, like Shelly. And there goes the battle. And this is the last time we will ever see this guy. And now, we can leave and get on our way to Moss Deep City. Never leave home without him! Anyway, let's go. Uh, since I'm far enough ahead level-wise, I'm not going to try and battle every single trainer, but some of them I'm just not going to have a choice. Okay. You know what, actually, yeah, we are going to switch you. Like, I think, yeah, I think you would have to battle both of them to get through. Now, we're not necessarily going to speedrun the rest of the story, because as soon as I get the 7th badge and dive, then I can catch the next member of my team, Registeel. But that's going to require a bit of prep work, because, uh, you see, this game couldn't just make it easy for you. No, there's a bit of a puzzle you got to solve. First, you got to get yourself a Relicanth and a Waylord, and then you got to go to a certain spot on a certain route, use dive, go inside of that area, use Dig, and then have the Relicanth and the Waylord in certain spots in your party when you read an inscription on a wall, and then that opens up the three ruins where you can find the legendary golems. Then you go there, and there's additional puzzles that you have to solve. 
Although, one of the puzzles in Ruby and Sapphire, anyway, wasn't really a puzzle at all. The one to, to find Reg Ice, the requirement was very simple. You walk to the center of the room, and then you just put your Game Boy down and do nothing for two minutes straight. I can see why they changed that, because, well, good luck getting kids to have that kind of patience. Oh, by the way, this house is where you can trade colored shards, whether you find them on the ground or held by wild Pokemon, for evolutionary stones. And this guy can teach your Pokemon Dynamic Punch, which basically useless unless you're using a Pokemon like Machamp, which has no guard. Because otherwise it misses half the time. I mean, yeah, there's moves like Mind Reader that can make it guaranteed to hit, but... That's just... You're wasting a, a turn. You're wasting a turn to do that. But on the other hand, it's guaranteed to cause confusion if it does hit. Is how much time have we been running for? Let me check. Okay, so we're at a bit over 20 minutes. I think we can call an episode here. Next time, we are going to be taking on the 7th Gym. Like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page, and I will see you all next time.